nationalism for a moment. So it looks like we're going to have this game coming up for you right now. It's going to be MAC, which is the Sir John A. McDonald Collegiate Institute, versus... Uh, Connolly High School? Connolly High School, yep. So... High School, all right. So I'm going to ask them really quick. Hey. Um... Oh, wow. Wow. Okay. I'm just asking them which side is which so I actually get their names correct. Because I've cast too many games where you're calling one team the wrong right. thing. So Okay. Uh, looks like Connolly is on the right. So it looks like Connolly High School is going to be on the right side of your screen. It's going to be the purple team. I don't have the stream up just yet because they haven't actually started the game. And then purple, blue team is actually going to be Mac. All right. So... All right, looks like both teams are ready. They're going to start this game right up right now. So we actually have Connolly High School versus Mac coming up for you right now. This is going to be the colle the high school, sorry, not the collegiate, the high school <laughs> star league coming at you right now. This is a national tournament for high schools across the nation playing League of Legends. I'm Zyrene, and with me I have... Some guy 1144. We are casting for you guys today. And thanks for joining us. So I'm going to take away this overlay, and we're going to get this game going. Um, is it just me, or does everything say the players have not connected yet? Just kidding. We have an Elise Ban coming out. Um, she's been a really strong top laner. I think she's been picked a lot in the uh, recent in pro tournaments recently as a jungler or a top laner. Yeah, Elise has been a really strong jungler lately because... Because the she's, wall jump. Yeah, because the wall jump, the repel, also the stun, her cocoon coming out. And the fact that she does percent HP damage means she like, she can do the dragon really quickly, and she can do other objectives quickly. But also the fact she takes no damage in the jungle, because you get your spiders to tank for you. Right. And then the, the percent damage lets you build tanky over damage, and then you still do damage. <laughs> That's a lot of damage. Oh. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. They You just build the Spirit of the Ancient Golem, but you're still doing percent HP damage. So you're perfectly fine in building tanky items. And so once again, if just to refresh people, we have Mac over on the blue side, and on the purple side, we're going to have Connolly High School. And it looks like Mac's, their second ban is going to be that Jarvan. Just uh, banning out the strong junglers. Yeah, it looks like... Uh... Yeah, I apologize that we don't actually have stream options for uh, streaming it down. Uh, st turning the quality down on the stream. I only stream at 720p. I apologize for people who don't have computers that can possibly keep up with that. We aren't partnered at the moment. But you can help us partner if you follow <laughs> us. If you support the High School Star League, you can f help us there. And then we'll have multiple resolutions and qualities for you next time. So, you know, if you really enjoy what you're seeing right now, if you really want to get involved with this and help us out, please check us out on the Twitter. Check us out on our website and follow the Twitch prize, the Twitch as well. And the prizes aren't announced, but they will be substantial. Our StarCraft 2, I believe, was actually $800 prize pool. So back to the game, though. We do have the Jana band coming out from Mac and the Cassadin band coming out from Connolly. And Ezreal. I think I think Ezreal and Cassadin might have been targeted bands. I don't know because I, we, we haven't seen these players uh, play. And I just noticed that... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, Mac has an uh, interesting choice of uh, player names. <laughs> Did you notice that? Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, I, I realized that. <laughs> they, this is going to be really bad. I'm going to have to call them 6, 9, 7, and 8. That's what I'm going to have to do right now. <laughs> or just call them by their champions. So, um, that, they, they did this to me. They did this to me! So... But yeah, no. I apologize for the black overlay. It's just a, it's just a, uh, a temporary blocker on summoner spells because if they're ghosting the stream, they'll be able to see what somebody's taking. If somebody's taking a tricky little teleport, or they want to put a Jarvan in mid instead of in the jungle, then you'll be able to see he's not taking smite. So if you ghost the stream, you would get information that you normally wouldn't get. But as you can see with this, it's a little tiny blocker. You know, if you look really hard, 
you know, it's not lined up perfectly, but you can, it, it kind of stops you from seeing that there's a flash or a ghost or something like that. And I apologize that it's just a standard black overlay. It's all I was given, or it's all I have. So I will have more in the future. I will simply have more professional. But let's stop talking about how unprofessional I am. Let's start talking about the game. So we have a blitz crank they got through because they took targeted bans instead of just banning blitz and thresh. Right. I think, uh, what is his name? Prev is just, or Pinev is just uh, kind of messing around with the picks, but he's probably going to go with the thresh pick. And looks like we're going to get Hook City. Yeah, it looks like last game we didn't have Hook City coming out, but today we're going to have some residents of Hook City up in this game. We're going to have a Thresh, and we're going to have a Blitzcrank, unless he changes from that Thresh at the last moment. But Twisted Fate also getting through. Yeah. Oh. And Twisted Fate actually had a 100% pick ban rate in OGN up until there was actually one game where nobody picked him when he wasn't banned. <laughs> and it was crazy. Every like I think Monte Cristo's mind exploded when that happened. It was, it was a little ridiculous. Because he's such a powerful champion, he has so much map control. And we are going to see the Thresh as a response to the Blitzcrank. It looks like we're going to... Uh, looks like the, the Oriana pick, she's been pretty popular in a OG and LCS as well. Good team fight utility and wave clear. As we see. Um, do you think uh, Connolly is going to pick up a Shen just for more global presence? I'm not sure, because that's really... You know, I don't mean to like be a spoiler alert, but the Roughly Lamps crew looks like they uh, have some synergy, not just within their names, but within their play. So I think they play together pretty frequently if you're going to have all names that are like that as well. so <laughs> Or they just change their names for the tournament. <laughs> just for the tournament? Then, then they'd have to win, because if they go home with nothing, they all change their names for nothing. And that's pretty <laughs> expensive, I believe. A name change is 1,300 RP. So oh. So, My bad on the uh, thinking Shen might be picked. I forgot he was banned. Yeah, Shen uh, is banned. Now so. I feel like a fool. <laughs> yeah, so they, will, they won't be able to pick him. But they do have the global pressure from the the TF. But if they picked up a Teemo, they'd have the global taunt too. So <laughs> they're just, it's Team Global over here. <laughs> we have a Vayne pick coming out. She's been really strong, especially with the Blade of the Rune King. Does she does a lot of percent health damage, so she doesn't ha exactly have to build um, AD or crit items. She just builds attack speed, so she can proc silver bolts faster, for the most part. Um, we have a Veger pick coming out. That's gonna be fun. Ooh. I, uh, you don't see Veger played a lot in tournaments, but it's gonna be a lot of fun watching him just blow up people if he gets that fun. Oh, he changed from the Fizz at the last second to Jace. I thought it, I thought we were gonna see some Fizz play. Fizz. Actually, was played by Lemon Dogs today in the EU LCS and carried that game. Actually, the Fiddle Six carried the game, but Fizz did really, really did a really great job picking up Lich Bane and dropping people, but having really great positioning as well. And the fact what? that Fizz can also use Playful Trickster to, to dodge exactly to dodge the Vigor ultimate. And that's that's really annoying when someone dodges uh, your ultimates, Vlad and uh, Fizz. Are yeah. really annoying <laughs> when you have targeted. Bolts and stuff like that. Uh. <laughs> yeah, it, it's <laughs> wow. We're gonna have a fiddlesticks coming out too, and it might be a jungle fiddlesticks, or a. I, it looks like it's most likely going to be a jungle fiddlesticks, but Riven can also jungle as well. But fiddlesticks doesn't fare very well in a lane, so you know, I, support fiddlesticks is pretty good, but we don't have anywhere to put Blitzcrank other than as a support. So looks like Hook City going to be coming out down bottom lane. And looks like uh, they're looking like a Cho'Gath maybe. They still have to pick their jungler. There's nothing for, there's nobody else that could possibly jungle on the team of Connolly. TF doesn't jungle. Jace doesn't jungle. Vayne doesn't jungle. They were really looking for something. Uh, 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 they're just messing with you now, aren't they? They they probably are, but uh, oh wow, oh my god, oh, oh the Eve, the twin. The... <laughs> <laughs> oh. They should pick uh, jungle eighty Malzahar. <laughs> and he's back to the Cho'Gath. Is he gonna pick this up? I, I think he is. He's gonna stop messing around with it now that the uh, time is running out. Oh no, it looks uh. like the Nautilus. It looks like more Hook City coming out here. Oh the Cho'Gath. Ah. Oh. 
<laughs> and the Cho'Gath is locked in for, for Danny over there. So, while this counts down, once again, on the blue team, on the left side of your screen, we have Sir John A. McDonald Collegiate Institute, which we're just going to call Mac, versus on the right side of your screen, on the purple team, we have Connolly, which is the Connolly High School. They don't have as fancy of a name, but, you know, hopefully their play style is just as fancy. As, as the name is for Sir John A. MacDonald Collegiate Institute. Collegiate so, Institute, that sounds like it's like a college thing. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it's a college prep school. It pro I mean, isn't high school just a college prep school? Well, I mean, special college prep school. I don't know. <laughs> I, I guess so. <laughs> I'm just throwing an idea out there. <laughs> I'm actually really impressed that this uh, the high school Star League actually got started by high schoolers. I mean, when I was in high school, I basically did nothing including my homework so <laughs> oh, i'm surprised yeah. i'm actually in college now <laughs> considering how poorly i did at high school so <laughs> but no these people over at the high school star league chose great initiative on their part getting involved in esports and the esports scene and bringing the high school scene to the front lines here this is just incredible yeah it's very impressive that they had that much uh, dedication and will to just put something so big together yeah and it just huge shout out to everybody over there at the high school star league they still still have their information over there on the right side the game's not going to start for another two minutes because we have this little delay countdown timer so once again i'm going to introduce ourselves i'm zyrene and with me here today co-casting i have some guy 1144 and we work now for the uh i guess we work now for the high school star league for today you guys thank you for joining us i don't know if you saw the reddit post and that's how you got here but thank you so much for joining us thank you so much for being involved in the scene and you know big shout out to all of you because the stream wouldn't be up if you guys didn't have an interest in watching this so thank you thank you for coming yeah thank you so much and so let's get down to the teams right now this team comp what does Connolly need to do to win this game we're gonna we're gonna talk about that on the purple team right now what do they need to do I think they need to basically not get caught. I mean, uh, Mac does have very good uh, catch with the uh, the Viger stun and the Blitz hook, and they're Connolly is gonna have to play their absolute best and pretty much secure objectives, uh, avoid losing lanes, and in the it's just going to be a really tough matchup for them because they are going up against pretty much really high ELO players. They've got, I think, uh, Mac has about three diamonds, maybe. I think Mac has maybe two, three diamonds, but diamond isn't always what it's about. Your ELO, I'm a diamond player myself, and I know that when you get up to diamond solo queue, the only thing that really improves is people's, people's CS ability and their decision making a little bit. But if you're not all in sync with each other, one person's going to make an aggro play, and the other person's going to play passive. Like, one person's going to be like, no, I want to get out of there. And the other one goes, no, 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 we're strong enough, let's go. And they end up splitting. So if they right. have good communication, then that's really what it's going to come down to. I've played many games, and that's really what it comes down to. We see it all the time in the LCS as well, when teams that are supposedly better than others end up losing because of a team decision. We see, we see TSM, we see Reginald dive with Karthus, and his whole team doesn't back him up because he made a decision to be aggro and his team was playing scared. So there's things like that that really, really is what it comes down to. And those people are challenger level. They're diamond level. So it comes down to synergy is really what it comes down to. So if they get bullied out of lane and then the diamond players just have better mechanics in them, then that's really where it will shine. So that would be unfortunate, but... Hopefully we have an entertaining game coming up for you guys. At the very least, we're going to see some diamond plays coming out from <laughs> from Mac, and hopefully we see Connolly counter with some silver plays. I don't know, but hopefully they step their their game up to at least a plat level, and they can give them a run for their money. And I didn't ask the teams if this is a best of three, and I'm regretting that right now. Well, ah. I think uh, uh, Mudkips for Sale said that once again this is a best of three, Sir John A. in, in the uh, Twitch chat. Uh, thank you. So, looks like it is going to be a best of three coming out here. I'm going to take that away. This is the first match of the best of three between Mac and Connolly, and let's let's break it down. Let's get this skin war coming out here because I like a lot of these skins that I'm seeing <laughs> right now. Looks like it's a uh, three to two again. Oh, three to three. Sorry. So they're tied in the skin war. 
Uh, uh, which, wh what's your favorite skin on this? I like the Dragon Slayer Vein skin. She's pretty much a staple of Vein. Like, I don't like the standard Vein skin. I really like the Dragon Slayer Vein skin. But I do <laughs> like part surprise party fiddlesticks a lot. So I, I'm kind of I'm kind of torn here. Oh, ooh, um, I'm gonna have to give it to the surprise party fiddlesticks. I'm gonna have to give it to them. <laughs> I, I I wish uh, Viger had the uh, Shamrock or the uh, Baron von Viger. Those are my two favorite skins. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, the the roughly crew here, coming out with six, nine, seven, and eight. I wonder where their other members are. <laughs> I wonder. I, think... I wonder if there's a five, four, three, two, one, and maybe a, a ten. Or maybe J-Dubs just didn't want to be 10. I think J-Dubs needs to change his name. J-Dubs and the crew? I think that <laughs> should be their team name. <laughs> it looks no, like... J-Dubs and the Lamps. <laughs> J-Dubs and the Lamps? That sounds like a... That sounds like a... Like, that sounds a like... No, that sounds like a, a band that would play like some soothing romantic music. We have some <laughs> J-Dubs and the Lamps coming up for you next here on the HSL radio. Stay tuned. So they just sound... That just sounds like something I'd want to listen to with like some Chardonnay and by, by a fire, just crackling. And some, it's like a smooth jazz band. That's what I imagine it being. All right, but once again, if you guys are just joining us, this is the High School Star League. I'm Zyrene. I got some guy with me right now, and that's actually his name. He's not just some guy. <laughs> so and right now we have on the blue side, we have Mac, and on the purple side, we have Connolly High School. Give a shout-out in chat. Who do you think is going to win this? Mac? Or Connolly. Connolly's going to need some love right now to come over this. Wow! Roughly just jumped over the wall with the ribbon jump. Oh, oh wow. That, that 3.8 ribbon jump. Yeah, and since the patch, Riven can actually jump over walls. Uh, with new walls. She can basically jump over wherever a Nidalee can jump if you play it right. So it's actually a, uh, kind of a tough maneuver to do. Yeah, see, he just messed it up right there. And he just messed it up again. <laughs> and there he goes. So... <laughs> So he's just messing around, showing off his skills really quick. But they do have a hook on both teams. So what do you think is going to happen there at this level one? you think roughly nine is going to go ahead and position himself for a blitz hook? That doesn't look like it. Looks like they're just going to go to their respective lanes. Um, they, I think at level one that uh, Connolly might actually have a bit of a stronger level one. Maybe. they've they do If, if Thresh had gotten... His E, but that's not relevant, I guess. Uh, sorry about that. <laughs> uh, it just looks like it's going to be standard starts. If Thresh, if Thresh does take his E, it means he doesn't have his death sentence to actually lock yeah. somebody up. So I'm not that's sure true. if that would have been a good pickup on him. But we are going to have a blue start from roughly seven. And the thing I'm noticing now is that Mac doesn't have a tank. That's true. They, oh, wow. And Pinev going and getting hooked by nine, actually. Getting hooked by a blind hook. <laughs> so Sometimes blind hooks are the best hooks. So I'm actually going to say that P in Pinev's name is actually... Oh, he gets the hook on nine. Says, you know what? You hook me, I hook oh. you. Let's do this back and forth. It looks like J-Dubs is actually running uh, a crit rune because he just crit um, uh, P I, uh, the veins... Uh, Vayne for 100 damage. Yep, he has a 1% crit rune hiding in his rune page. That's sneaky, <laughs> sneaky. So, and actually that 1% actually coming out really early. That's a big chunk of Vayne's HP. But, oh wow, Riven getting that level 2 on Noctavius. Gonna go all in right now. Uses the ignite. And it looks like they're actually gonna trade kills. Uh, with them trading kills, who do you think is gonna favor more now that they... Uh in that lane up top with Jace versus Riven. The first blood did go to uh, roughly eight lamps, but Noctavius uh, didn't have to burn his flash there. So Noctavius actually has flash over, and while I'm talking, there's going to have an engage here. We're going to have the rocket grab coming on to down bottom onto uh, Pew. I'll just call him Pew, and I'll call him Nev. So, all right. <laughs> okay. so, so I'm just taking a second here. Everything's settling down. Nothing's happening. Okay, so like I was saying, Noct... Nock is actually going to be at a disadvantage there. He does have his flash, and he does have the minion wave in his favor, but he didn't hit level two, and we're gonna have a hook down. And it looks like they really want this. The rocket jump coming out from J-Dubs. He does get the, the kill there. And roughly lamp seven, roughly seven. They're gonna do this to me all the game, aren't they? <laughs> is actually 
there as well. I don't know if he got an assist on that one. He actually didn't. So up top, it actually looks like this is going to be in favor of Nock. He did have the wave pushing towards his turret, which ended up being greatly in his favor because he didn't hit level 2, and he was still level 1 when he got killed. Right. And so if the lane had been stuck in the middle of the lane, uh, 8 lamps could have just bullied uh, Nock as he got back to lane, but looks like we have a gank going down on top. Uh, Cho'Gath is not going to get a rupture off. Oh, never nope. mind. He did. He does get the rupture off. There's still a flash in the favor of Nock, but they also have a red buff trying to slow roughly down. Oh, and Nock isn't actually going to follow that. He says, you know what? I'm going to push you out of lane and force you to back and or use your potions. Yep. Looks like uh, uh, roughly eight started with a red pot. Or he picked up a red pot at some point. Which oh. is, he probably started with a red pot for his... Um, all in. All in. Level one. Or level two? Was that a level two all in? He, he did level two all in. He did level two. Okay. He got level two and got the Kai Blast, the stun, the W from Ribbon. But now he's actually behind in levels. Knock. Poking him down a little bit. Knock has a cloth armor and multiple pots. He is ahead in CS. Oh, well, not anymore. They were, they were even in CS, and the lane's pushing in the favor of... Well, that's actually going to be at 8's turret. And this is going to be so confusing. You, you said 8, and I had to look at all, the, all of their numbers and be like, which one's 8, which one's 8, which one's 8? <laughs> so, I think it's going to be tough, even for the viewers. So I think we're going to have to say what their, their character is. And it looks like Vigar going to go in on Slojin there and just stun him and poke him a little bit. He has no way to recover that HP except for the use of potions. Doesn't have any vamp at all, and no no ability that TF has gives him back HP. And Noctavius actually going to take... Noctavagius? I don't know. I'm just going to call him Noct... Whatever. <laughs> Taking a lot of damage there from Riven. <laughs> J-Dub's laughing at the lantern. Oh. I think uh, once once Vigor hits level 6, that TF is going to have a lot of trouble. I think TF doesn't want to be in that lane, though. So it yeah. looks like another rocket grab coming in on Pinev. He's going to get taken down to sub 50% sub HP. So he's going to have to play a little passive. He does throw a hook out, misses the death sentence. And so that's going to be on cooldown for a little while longer. He checks the bush with his lantern, his dark passage. So, But let's get back to what you're talking about with the TF. The TF doesn't want to be in that lane against Vigar. So he's going to want to use his destiny fate and go to a different lane. He did bring the teleport. So Slojin's right. going to be able to go to a lane with Destiny and Fate and then teleport back to his lane. And Vigar's going to have to take advantage of the teleport, maybe use his uh, Event Horizon to stun him as he's coming out of the teleport or you know, before he uses Guest Destiny Gate. So we have a stun coming out. And I think this is, yep, he's dead. Ooh, he's dead. That was, <laughs> that, yep, that was the burst. That was the Vigar. Using the event horizon, then following up with his, uh, is that called primordial burst? Primordial burst. Yeah, yeah, primordial burst, and just using all of his abilities on him and just taking him out using the ignite as well. So, roughly six lamps, getting a the kill there really, really easily, easily. Actually, TF is not the tankiest character. He he's very squishy. So, and when you're squishy and you're going versus a uh, a Vigor who has a lot of burst and who does his ult does extra damage based on your AP, you're not going to have a good day. Yeah, no, not at all. You're going to be spending a lot of your day actually in the fountain or the death chamber. So Twisted Fate there, Slo uh, Slojin wanted to ward. He wanted to ward that bush on the right side. And we're going to have a rocket wrap come around. He tumbles, but it's not good enough. He's going to try to get to the Dark Passage. He uses a Condemn, but he doesn't even try to click the Dark Passage. Click the Lantern, and he gets killed by J-Dubs there with a rocket jump and a buster shot coming out. And it looks like Roughly 8 is actually going to have to fight here. He is going to get caught here. There is a flash coming out as well. The ignite's ticking. The rupture isn't isn't going to be good enough. Noctavius needs to hit this, and he does hit the acceleration gate. Shock blast. And wow, there's a 1k gold advantage in the favor of Mac right now. And it looks like they're going to pick up this turret as well. Or just gonna give him do a lot of damage gold. to it. Yeah, it <laughs> looks like he doesn't want to take it just yet. Looks like he's he's fine in this lane because they have been doing very very well in this lane they have two kills on to j-dubs and he's 20 cs ahead of vane so yep. ooh. i think i think they just want to kill vane a couple more times before they take that turret uh, which is probably why they didn't take it yeah vane and is still worth rocket, some gold oh, ooh. rocket grab misses down what and it looks like he wants to start being aggressive here j-dubs doesn't have a lot of mana i believe rocket jump takes 75 mana to use 
uh, 80 mana to use. 80. So he doesn't actually have the mana for a rocket jump. If they had engaged him right now, Roughly is actually in the bush. Seven is coming out. He uses the ultimate. He is going to use Terrify on Pew, but Pew flashes at the same time. It's way the rocket grab is good Whoa. on Pew. The barrier comes out. The Dark Passage is down, but he condemns him into a wall, and he gets taken out by Blitzcrank. Wow. So yeah, they wanted this turret for that re They wanted to leave the turret alive for that reason, to give them that sense of security. They pushed up, and then they just took it. So now they're going to go for that dragon as well. Yep. Surprise party fiddle. Yeah. Surprise! It just comes out of the bush, and oh, that is just... It's a wonderful sound, but it's a terrible sound if you're... If... If you're the enemy. <laughs> oh, it just... It's kind of annoying, too. Because the worst thing is being beaten. It's pretty bad to be beaten, but the worst thing is being beaten and then just hearing like a little buzzer or like, like, like hello, surprise. It's just so <laughs> cheerful, but... Oh. And it looks like uh -oh, Slogan. Disconnect. Slogan actually... And the pause coming out. Disconnecting here. And the pause is going to come out, so... Uh, in the meantime, there's a 4k gold difference already at 10 k at 10 minutes in, in the favor of Mac. And, you know, this is kind of to be expected because they do have higher solo queue elos. But the CS is a little... It's not disheartening because nobody has, like, double CS of anybody else. But the kills are looking pretty grave right now. They did pick up a dragon and a turret this early in the game. So what does, what does Connolly need to do besides step up their play... If they could hypothetically start doing anything, what would they have to do to come back from into this game? Definitely uh, look to catch out uh, Viger and Tristana. Those two would be the strongest characters, especially if you remove uh, Viger's ability to take out one of your players. It it'll equalize team fights a little bit, I think. And they definitely have to start securing objectives. A lot better and keeping up the uh, the ward vision just so they can try and catch someone out and i think we need to see tf leaving his lane and trying to apply pressure to bot lane and get his vein fed because if you have a vein fed that gets uh really uh fed we we, we could see um Connolly, if they team fight well with it we could see them possibly come back and maybe win this game because um Mac does not have any tanks, so if we can get a fed vein, she'll just cut through everyone in maybe two or three hits, or less. Um, anything you'd like to add? No, no, that sound that sounded, you know, exactly what I was thinking as well. Is that they need that vein? They need Pew to be fed. They need Knock to be able to poke them down and make everybody a little squishier. And they need to avoid those Blitzcrank hooks because that's really going to set them back. A Blitzcrank hook, an Event Horizon comes down on top of that. You can't help that member that just got pulled into the enemy team. You can't help them. They're going to be gone. And Danny needs to start getting tanky. Danny's going to be tanky. They're going to have a frontliner, that big Cho'Gath, 4k HP. Really not going to care about the damage coming his way. But J-Dubs on that Tristana is just such a late game carry with the range. If he can play keep away from Pew and keep away from the entire team of Connolly, he's going to be able to stay alive, do the damage he needs to do to the, to the front line, to the tank, to Danny, and really just take home a win for Connolly, it's really going to come down to these next crucial couple moments here, because it looks like they're all going to push mid, and that's going to really, if they get that mid turret, it's really going to stop Slogan from using Destiny Fate into other lanes, because once you're in the middle, once you're, uh, once your middle turret's taken, and you're pushed back a little, that Destiny range isn't global anymore, so it only gets you from one lane to another, so he'd have to put himself at risk by walking forward to Destiny Fate to another lane. So it's really it would be really scary for him if they take this. But if they don't take it and Tristana starts pushing bottom, he could Destiny Fate behind them because they'd be so far up because the turret's gone for Connolly. So uh, it looks like so Slogan is not going to come back to this game according to uh, in-game chat. Um, it seems like his parents i think have removed him from the game his parents have removed so well someone said that uh said uh asian parents op and then <laughs> asian parents op uh yeah you doctor yet no why are you on computer get off computer and so <laughs> oh god uh, you're you're half right yes 
Is it your mom or your dad? Mom. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. I I dated a girl who had a um, an Asian mother, and apparently she got shoes thrown at her when she was little. So <laughs> apparently that's. Oh, wait, a... wait, 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 wait. Oh, yes, he oh, he. Is he, he back? Is he back? <laughs> yes, he's back. But but just kidding. But Thresh DC'd right. <laughs> I don't know. I think uh... Thresh DC'd right there as he came back. So they swapped one out for another. Ever this pause is still going to continue. But <laughs> it would have been really funny if he got ganked by mom. <laughs> Just like the Korean player. Uh, Aiden, you're getting a lot of heat in chat for that last. Oh, I probably, <laughs> I, I probably am, but I go to UCI, so I, I'm pretty sure that, I'm pretty sure that that, you know, it, although it is a comment that is a little on the iffy side, it's, it's still pretty. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna say it's pretty accurate. I don't know. There was, a, there was a team. Is there a team in, um, in a different tournament I'm casting called We Doctor yet? Oh god. <laughs> yeah, that's at the uh, Cal State University Long Beach one. So, it was, uh, no, I think that was actually on my mind because of that. And I think that that game's at like 7 p.m. or something like that? What time is it now? Oh, it's like 6.15. So, you know, that game's going to be going over uh, at the College of Casting. I'm not casting that, though. I'm casting this all day. And it looks like we're going we're gonna to have the pause coming out here. The unpause. And it looks like we're going to see this middle push coming out right now for Max. So we're back in this game. Thanks for sticking with us here. We have a four-man, five-man push coming middle. And Slogan's not ready for this. The Event Horizon comes out. The Rocket grab on top of that. Slogan gets taken out by the, the Blade of the Exile. And they're going to push this turret down with that extra AD from Riven's ultimate. And they have that nobody here to defend me. this. Everybody else is off in their side lanes. And they might pick up a second turret for this too. I think they're definitely going to go for it. It's a free turret. Nobody's answering this. That pause may have staggered them a little bit in their reaction. Maybe they didn't know what was happening. And they're still off in their little worlds. They're going to get this second turret, this tier 2 turret. And they might actually push another, too. Nobody's coming to answer. And they see where the other team is. They see where Connolly is. They see Riven and Thresh bottom. They see Jace top. And we, oh, wow, and the hook comes out again. Rough 6 gets it. And it looks like JW's going to pick that up again. But he actually... Okay, so... I hate that all these players have the same name. I'm just going to say that right now. They'd, <laughs> this is just a terrible time. And they're going to actually get an 11 minute inhibitor right now because nobody's come up to answer this. Yeah. Thresh and Vayne haven't even made an attempt at recalling. So I th do you think they're just going to concede this game? I, I don't know. I think Thresh and Vayne have just been so far behind. Vayne actually just caught up in CS, but they lost three turrets and an inhibitor for that, and that's just going to be huge this early in the game. That gives them a 6k gold lead, four turrets up, and an inhibitor. So there's going to be super minions pouring down the middle, and that's going to stop TF dead in his tracks. There's going to be no more ganks coming out from him, unless he's going to risk more pushes. Well, I don't even think uh, Connolly can actually push out of there on the side lanes right now, because they have no map control down the middle because of the super minions. Yeah, and because the inhibitor goes down, that actually means that all other minions are buffed. Their side lane minions are buffed. You have super minions pouring down the middle. I don't know how much damage it gives them exactly, but it, I believe it scales with each one. So the minions are actually souped up so that the, the side lanes will naturally start pushing by themselves in the favor of Mac on the blue team. So the purple team's got a lot coming their way right now. They're down a dragon, and they're down so much right now. And now they're grouping middle. <laughs> just, they're, they're about two minutes too late for this, but they're grouping mid. <laughs> so it looks like oh, Pinov trying to, trying to pull a nice play here, but doesn't actually land the death sentence or throw the lantern far enough behind him for anybody to follow up with that. But his heart's in the right place. You know, he's like, I gotta make a play here on this one person. So, uh, these minions are just gonna be so hard to handle. This early in the game, having super minions is sheer death you try to you try to take them on it's not fun noctivus gonna check this bush the ultimate's coming out the ignite the flash oh not the flash but the acceleration gate sorry the ignite comes out and he doesn't actually flash because he was dead so oh oh yeah you guys didn't see it but roughly eight just actually jumped over the jumped over the wall right here and we have the ultimate coming out for fiddlesticks onto this tier two turret we have pw or Pew and Nev both getting taken out here under this turret. He got executed. And executed oh by the turret. Nobody touched him. 
and they're going to take this turret too. And like I said, the lanes are naturally pushing in their favor. If you look at these creeps, they have 47 damage on the range creeps. Whereas if you look at purple side, they only have 30. So there's naturally 17 more damage, which is about a 50% increase in damage. Even more. So, oh wow, Slogan actually eats a rocket grab there. The Blade of the Exile coming out, but there's actually going to be a counter kill coming out here. And roughly Lamps is 8 is actually very low. But j -Dubs was poking Knock the entire time because he had switched the Mercury Hammer. Let's see if... Uh... Oh, he flat... Oh. He missed his ex uh, his uh, death sentence. Oh, he does get the flay onto j -Dubs, though, and the flash comes out from Knock Davis to over get over the wall. And it looks like we're having the death fire grasp come on Pinev. He does put down the box, and roughly... Mike get taken out here are roughly eight lamps, I guess. Oh, I keep saying roughly, and then there's a number after it that really matters, <laughs> apparently, because there are four people in this game named roughly... X lamps. Uh, so it looks like J Dub's in the crew actually doing some work here, doing a lot of work. And they're gonna move off once again onto the jungler. And they're pushing this side this side inhibitor turret. Oh, the event no, horizon comes Slogan out on Slogan. Slogan gets taken here. out once again. Oh He just walked right into the uh, event horizon there. As a seven K gold advantage for Mac over Connolly and Wow, you have to be... All right, so I think it's still a best of three, so I'm going to say what I said last time. You, while they're fending off these super minions, they got to start thinking about what they're going to do for the next game. You know, They're thinking about this game right now, but this game is looking very grave. Typically, when you get an inhibitor and there are no towers taken on your team, the game is pretty much sealed this early. They can come back, though, if they start getting objectives. They can hold this inhibitor for, for long enough that it responds and then start getting into that super late game, have great positioning with their vein, And I'm being very hopeful here. So if that happens, they'll be able to come back and they need to start catching people out. But their Mac is just doing a, such a great job of being grouped up at the right place. Like right now we see Vigar actually coming in and he just repositions Noctavius actually closer to Vigar. He didn't know this was going to happen. The Deathfire Grasp comes out and I can't talk fast enough for all those spells. So, wow, rough, roughly six lamps does so much damage with just his Q. He's going to walk... Oh, he gets zoned by that, and he's going to be in range of this Q, and he gets taken out by it. He does try to hook the golem, and it's just... <laughs> <tried> <laughs> hooking the golem into his body. We've seen some great things here today. We saw that Orianna flash with the Alistar headbutt. That was, that was my favorite. That was my highlight. <laughs> that was my highlight for today. The dragon's actually up right now, so it looks like Mac's actually going to take that once again. Looks and like... Uh... Yeah, so they're going to take that and solidify their gold lead even further into a 10k gold lead now. And they're once again going to start pushing that bottom turret, that bottom inhibitor turret. They have one inhibitor mid that's just respawned, so it looks like Mac, uh, not Mac, sorry, Connolly, the the purple team needs to defend that. And, oh wow, so he actually threw that off to the side there. Lamps eight. It, roughly eight lamps. Ah. <laughs> it's usually when you're casting, you try to shorten their name. And I can't say roughly. Wait. So just go with numbers. Numbers. Number eight doing it. Oh, so we have, uh, Nev getting grabbed. Wow. Number nine actually hooks him as he's grab Death Net didn't hit sing him. So they hook each other, and he actually got pulled over the wall at the same time. They actually pick him up there. Riven oh. trying to jump over the wall. He doesn't actually get it. The surprise coming out from seven there. J Dubs jumps over the wall. The Zonia is coming as well. They try to pick up roughly uh, Riven, and they pick him up. So Slogan trying to do some damage here. But meanwhile, Vigar6 has been pushing the top lane by himself. Vigar's actually doing a lot of damage to that turret every time he smacks it. He's going down by a sizable chunk. Because turrets, when you do have AP, you do, I believe, half your AP as damage to the turret instead of AD. It helps AP characters do damage to the turrets because otherwise it would just be AD, tam AD champions doing damage to them. Because <laughs> Vigar hitting it for like 45 damage is, is nothing. But he's hitting it for yeah. a sizable amount because he's got about 280 AP just sitting around. Okay. He's going to go back and get more of that AP. They have two exposed inhibitors for Connolly. This is, ooh, man. you got to be biting your nails right now if you're, if you're going to Connolly High School. <laughs> <sighs> and so do you think we're going to see a Baron pick up anytime soon? Or do you think they're just going to play it safe, not risk it getting stolen, and just keep pushing these turrets inhibitors and say, you know, you know, we don't need Baron. I think they're just gonna keep pushing and catching people out. 
we have a uh, Vigor picking up an early Void Staff. <laughs> oh wow, we have Nock actually getting caught out here. He's not gonna be able to outrun the Riven. He doesn't get, doesn't get far enough away from the Rocket Grab. <laughs> and six, the Vigar just completely combos, <laughs> completely combos Thresh, and that might give them the security to actually do this Baron. Yep. Killing two members, picking up the Baron. The Baron does do a lot of damage to them currently because they are such low level still. Remember, it's only 19 minutes into the game. Although we don't usually see inhibitors down this early, this is what we're seeing in this game. So the Oracles on Blitzcrank looking for the hook on somebody. And they are taking we have a lot Riven of just uh, looking to zone out Connolly. Oh, she wall jumps. <laughs> yep, she jumps over the wall with that uh, broken wings. Just flies her over the wall. You can jump where that little uh, purple thing is. Where this thing, this little purple thing is, you can actually jump over that. You can also hit with most, uh, not most AD carries, but you can hit there with Caitlyn and a super ra long range Tristana. You can hit there because I believe the range to the Baron from there is about 625, something like that. So you can actually shoot the Baron from there if you're Caitlyn, standing by that little pink thing. So that'll actually help out a lot of Caitlyn's. If you're on that side of the map, if you're on the other side, it's actually quite bad. So Event Horizon comes out, but he misses the rocket grab because he was putting it in front, but he does get completely bursted by Vigar and Blitzcrank, and Blitzcrank picks up the <laughs> kill there. So, uh, not a whole lot coming out. Looks like they're just going to take the mid inhibitor, and then probably look to do the final push and end the game. And it looks like Mac, the Baron up, Mac is actually going to split push here, has Riven up in the top lane, actually coming down now. They're going to try to do damage to Pew. The Blade of the Exile coming out as well, but the Stun Card comes out on roughly eight lamps. He's trying to close that distance, wants to use it, but he can't. So he's going to flash. He actually gets hit by the Thundering thundering Blow, is that what the hammer's called? Yeah, I think so. Uh, don't switch stances. Yeah, he, he, went, oh. he went sideways. <laughs> but still, yeah, he went sideways. It does mess with that a little bit. He does get J-Dub with a death sentence. He does get hit up in the rupture, so he doesn't actually get the rocket jump away. The Fate Destiny coming out. They do get a kill onto the Blitzcrank, but now we have Pew trying to get in the back line. He does go after J-Dub. J-Dub pops the barrier. He's trying to get after him. He uses the Blade of the Ruined King. He's trying to roll away. He does have that red buff. Walks straight into the Event Horizon. He gets terrified. Is he going to take enough damage here? Roughly 8 doing a lot of damage to him. Does use the Kai Blast to pick him up there. And he starts backing on his body, takes some turret shots, and wow, it, that was an ace in the favor of the Baron up Mac. But they did lose two members to that. Oh wow, are they gonna pick up this top inhibitor as well? I'm that, v not sure. Viger, Viger just blew up TF as soon as he as TF ran towards me. <laughs> Yeah, that was... Slogan has not been having a good game. He's 0-5 against that 8-0-7 Vigar. He's just been blowing him up every time he gets close enough to do anything. So this has and... been a very one-sided game since the game started snowballing after that pause. The pause really might have thrown off the momentum of Connolly. So the purple team might might have been like, well, you know what, let's get back in this game. Let's. Sit. But then as they're doing that, their mid's getting pushed all the way down to the inhibitor. And they, they lose it completely unanswered. They didn't even take a top turret or a bottom turret. It was it was just a little shocking. And I think that's going to be something that they have to look at if they're going into another game after this. They have to think, well, that's where we really went wrong. That's where we really lost this game is we didn't counter them. We didn't look at what they were doing and say, whoa, whoa, whoa we need to do something about that. They didn't, <laughs> they didn't do anything about that. So they need to play more cohesively as a team. And that's just not something we've been seeing. And Roughly 6 is actually... Uh. Oh, that is disgusting. That <laughs> When you're at that point of, as a Vigar where you can just 1 to 0, 100 to 0 an AD character, then that's disgusting. He can do that to APs all the time, but an AD character, uh, that's, that's just bad. It's not even the ADC, so that's a solo lane AD carry. It, and, it's even it's even more disgusting when you do it to a tank. Uh, and speaking of disgusting stuff, we have J Dubs J Dubs coming in here. He does get, he does get the reset and he's gonna come after Pew and he gets that final shot for the double kill. And, wow, and it looks like they're probably gonna push this up. I don't know if the GGs are coming out just yet, but they're gonna push that inhibitor turret with roughly nine. And they say, well, we actually want your Nexus turrets. <laughs> Sorry, not the inhibitor turret, the inhibitor itself. So. They are going to push these. He does want to try and 100 to 0 this tank. He does get him to about 25%, but he didn't actually have his ultimate up. He probably could have 100 him. And yeah, oh, ouch. It looks like, it looks like Mac is going to take this game in almost a very, you know, not almost. They're going to take this very convincingly with almost 
20k gold more than Connolly. This is, I guess, the power of the diamond versus the silver. That is a plat gold plat, and then that's three whole divisions. Not not just a. Uh, is it a division? Uh, one, two, three, four. Uh, I, I don't know what it's called, but three whole precious metals. Let's just do it that way. <laughs> three whole precious metals more. So <laughs> that was weird, but so we have a victory coming out for Mac in this first game of the best of three. This is the high school star league tournament coming out here. This is a national tournament for most, for a lot of high schools coming out. I don't know what's up with the pause. I just looked at that. So uh, it looks like uh, TF had to leave for a second because parents. Yeah, that's what it looked like was coming out there. So, um, 